This is They Reminisce Over You. I'm Miguel. And I'm Christina. We wanted to take a minute to make a small request of all our listeners. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Good Pods, or Podchaser, leave us a five-star rating. You can also leave a review as well on Apple, Good Pods, and Podchaser. Ratings and reviews will help us with discoverability, and we want to get this out to as many like-minded folks as we can. We want to get on the first page of these podcast apps. And to move up on the charts as well. So help us get the word out. Make sure to follow and interact with us on social media. We're at Troy Podcast on the gram and the bird. Also, check out our website, TroyPodcast.com. It's where we post links to a lot of the things that we mentioned in the show, as well as transcripts and themed playlists that supplement our episodes and more. Thank you again for your support. You ready to get into the show? Let's do it. Welcome back. This is Christina. And I'm Miguel. This week we are talking about a rapper, an actor, Grammy winner. He's the ladies love, legend in leather, long and lean and he don't wear pleather. The GOAT. James Todd Smith, a.k.a. LL Cool J. A.k.a. Cool L, a.k.a. Uh... He claims Big Ellie, but <laughs> nobody calls him that. <laughs> but that's who we're talking about this week. So I think we should just get right into it. Let's do it. All right. So I'm obviously a bigger LL Cool J fan than you are. That's because you're old. I'm not old. Older. <laughs> I'm like four years older than you. <laughs> that's a big difference when you're a kid, though. Yeah, I guess. That's true. (laughs) But for me, it started very early with his first album, Radio. Mm -hmm. He was 16 when this album came out. And as we all know, hip hop is a young man's game or young woman's game. Young people. Young people's game. (laughs) And he was one of the youngest at the time. And he talked shit like an adult. With a lot of fervor, too. (laughs) Yes. He had a a lot of youthful energy is a, (laughs) a good way to put it. Uh, Have you actually listened to these albums? As I was saying about you being older, with the first album being out in 1984, I was five. (laughs) So I think it's safe to say I didn't listen to the first two albums when they were released, but I am familiar with the hits, but I had to have discovered them a little later on. Yeah, my cousin played them for me Mm because he used to call himself LL Cool J. I don't know if he's listening to this, but if he is, I'm talking about my cousin Johnny. (laughs) And he's a couple years older than me, so he's the one who put me on to LL. And yeah, he would refer to himself as Cool Mm -hmm. J all the time. So that's how I got into it. All right. So I remember him playing the radio album for me. And with it being so early in hip hop, it was like nothing I'd ever heard before. Right. So listening to it as an adult, what Mm -hmm. were your thoughts on the radio album? Well, the first song, I Can't Live Without My Radio, I put in my notes, starts off with a bang (laughs) because he just, what did you say, teenage energy? Yeah. He just went right into it. (laughs) And my first thought was, I can see why a young Miguel would like this. <laughs> and I think I've always just known Rock the Bells because it's referenced a lot. Even though I hadn't listened to the album, it still felt very familiar. Right. But the stuff that I wasn't familiar with, I just thought was hilarious. <laughs> like that, you can't dance. Oh, That's those, a lot. <laughs> those are so, <laughs> so extra. And it's so silly. He's like, okay, yeah, I get it. He's a teenager. <laughs> but you hear something like LL Cool J is bad as hell. And you're like, wow. Hard as hell. It's hard as hell. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hip hop, hip hop. And then you hear, you can't dance. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, all right. Yeah, we'll jump ahead to Bigger and Deffer. <laughs> Well, to me, to me, both albums, they didn't really sound that much different because they're like two years apart and listening to the full albums is new to me. So I would say the opposite. They sound completely different to me. Like radio is sparse. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of drums. There's some guitar stabs, some scratching in there. But with Bigger and Deffer, there's actually like more samples with it. So, for example, I'm Bad has the SWAT theme song. I Need Love had a little keyboards, Let's Get Ill. All these songs had more samples in it than the previous album, which made me like it even more. I was like, oh, this nigga got better. (laughs) I think to me it just sounds like 80s rap. Yeah, I can see that. (laughs) So I couldn't pick out those distinctions the same way you did. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this sounds like 80s rap. Uh, Something I didn't know until maybe two days ago when I was listening to it on What's the Song? On Get Down, Mm -hmm. he says, I'm bad like a brother from Alcatraz. As he's saying, I'm bad, 
they're scratching in I'm bad as well. I was like, I've never heard that before. And this album is like 30 years old, <laughs> but I heard it for the first time the other day. Yeah. And the samples were familiar too. Mm -hmm. So he's sampling himself. Mm -hmm. There's some slick Rick samples on it. And I'm like, how can you use somebody else's song? It just came out last year. <laughs> There's run DMC samples. So mm -hmm. that made me like it a lot more because these samples were familiar. I was like, I know that song. That's Run DMC. Yeah, there's That's... a song that you already know. And right. Like. And it was <laughs> familiar. It wasn't mm -hmm. like sampling some Parliament Funkadelic or something. But I said this on the pod before. We got to find a way to bring back the word skeezer. <laughs> 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 I don't know how we're going to do it, but we need to bring skeezer back. You just got to start using it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to use it, but... In 2023. You bring back too? No, nah, that's a little too old for me. <laughs> but I think we need to bring Skeezer back. Skeezer, okay. <laughs> His next album was Walking with a Pimp. Yes, 1989. And it had some of your favorite songs on it. I'm that type of guy. <laughs> you love that. I find that song so creepy because <laughs> he's just like, I'm that type of guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. But there are some hits on here. Okay. What'd you like? Going back to Cali. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Big old butt. <laughs> right. I actually don't know this Jingling Baby version. I like this one better. I like the Mama Said Knock You Out remix version yeah. better. But it could be because I heard that first. Yeah. So when I heard this one, I was like, huh? What's this? Because I think <laughs> I forgot that that was on the Mama Said Knock You Out album. So when I saw Jingling Baby, I was ready to get down. Right. And I'm like, hmm, what is this? <laughs> yeah, the production on that version is way better. Right. But I like the way he's rapping on this version okay. better. And then there were the sort of love ballads. Yeah, he tried to go back <gasps> to that, I need love well. These are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, and I was going to bring this up uh -huh. later, but may as well get into it now. Uh -huh. To me, it seems like after Bigger and Deffer, uh -huh. every other album was bad. I shouldn't say bad, because all of his albums had hits on Yeah, them. They just weren't as good as the previous album. Uh -huh. Because commercially, this was a hit, but the streets right. didn't really like it. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's different to have I Need Love, one track on the album. But then this one shot at love, You're My Heart, a different <laughs> world. I don't know if I would necessarily call it as like selling out. I mean, I'm also a woman, I guess. <laughs> and so that was like, oh, you're making chick songs, right? Yeah. But I just thought they were cheesy, not so much that it was like... Yeah, that was he the wasn't, problem. Yeah, but he showed on the other songs that he could still rap. Right. It was just those songs were just trying too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny that listening to this album and it fell off, mm -hmm. or quote unquote fell off. His last song before this was Jack the Ripper, mm -hmm. which is one of his greatest songs of all time, where he's basically butchering cool modi and that was the last thing we had heard from him because it was the beast high to going back to cali and then the next song is i'm that type of guy it's like okay. how we go from jack the ripper to i'm that type of guy right so i found that to be interesting it wasn't mm -hmm. a bad song but as i'm going to talk about later that was like the first of his <laughs> LL is doing too much in the videos type situation mm -hmm. where he's just sneaking into his own vault, <laughs> his vault full of women. Yeah, LL does a lot. <laughs> he does. He was taking that ladies love part a little too far sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me also, again, just because of when these albums, albums were released really and when I discovered him, I wasn't there for that falling off conversation. Right. To me, it all just sounds like, okay, this was like 80s LL. So yeah. to me, it doesn't feel like he's falling off or anything. Right. But I'm sort of just getting it all at once instead of every two years like you guys were getting it. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is, like I mentioned, the pattern of his albums being up and down. Mm -hmm. After this album, going into the next album, he had a song called To the Break of Dawn on yep. the House Party soundtrack. And if you look at the listing on the House Party soundtrack, this is not fit in with the theme of it at all. All the rest of the songs are about partying and having a good time. He's talking about Ice T, Hammer, and Kumo D. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't fit at all, but it kind of set up the next one, which is 
Mama Said Knock You Out, which is his quote unquote comeback album <laughs> at all of 22 years old. How do you have yeah. a comeback album <laughs> at 22? And the comeback album was only a year after the last album. Right. But I guess he couldn't wait to be like, nah, I haven't fallen off. <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> I'm not going to hide for three, four years. <laughs> <laughs> The only difference between this album mm -hmm. and Walking with a Panther to me is the production. Like the content is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. There are less songs. So I guess they figured, you know what? We don't need all this extra filler to just take up space. Mm -hmm. And they just gave you the hits. Yeah. And then he figured out like, okay, if you're going to make a quote unquote girl song or something for the ladies around the way girl. Do it like that, not these weird ballads. <laughs> yeah, that was when he kind of figured it out was yeah. on the Mama Said Knock You Out album. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, I got the records for the streets, mm -hmm. and I got the records for the ladies, but they're not cheesy. Mm -hmm. like, it's just something that the women will like, but not just go, ugh, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he still got his nasty songs, too. He does have those, too. He, <laughs> he didn't give it up completely. He did not. But he kind of was able to make better songs right. for the ladies. The thing that I noticed, though, just listening to the albums back to back, even though this album is only one year after Walking with the Panther, to me, he just sounded older. A lot changed in a year. I think that goes with the <laughs> production as well. Mm, maybe they were able to just, like, beef up his vocals. Yeah. And I think he got, like, beefier, too. Cause I'm oh, just... yeah. He, he had grown a lot between the two albums. Because I was just thinking about the album cover. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is only one year after I'm the type of guy. <laughs> yeah. He got in the gym and decided he was going to start taking his shirt off. Yeah. And it's been on and popping ever since. I just thought that was interesting that he literally sounded like he went from a teenager to a man and he looked <laughs> like it. Well, that's basically what happened. He's like, I'm 22 now. Well, the funny thing about this is, even though I'm familiar with some of the other songs, I don't remember if I heard them before this album or if I just discovered them after this album. But this is kind of like how I remember like discovering LL Cool J. Like, okay. I know this album. The other stuff is like, oh, yeah, those are LL songs. Right. With his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, the reason why it's embedded in your memory. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's just... Because the first song I feel like I remember hearing was Mama Said Knock You Out. Okay. And he was so aggressive, but it was so, it's just like, I don't know, like it, it wraps you up. <laughs> okay. It's like you're in it. He's just, don't call it a comeback. And you're just like, ooh, <laughs> what's Ready going on here? Yep. Although, of course, I love Around the Way Girl. Of course. I don't know which one was released first, Mama Said Knock You Out. No, that was the third single. Oh. It was uh, The Booming System. Okay, so I probably saw Around the Way Girl first. Yeah, that was second, and then Mama Said Knock You Out. I didn't even know Booming System was a single. I just knew it because I had the album. <laughs> yeah, it's the first single, and it's the only place you can get the unedited version of The Booming System. Okay. Also, since I didn't know this was a comeback album because I didn't know the history of his previous albums, Cheesy Rat Blues makes a lot more sense <laughs> knowing that. that. <laughs> go to the mall they throw my old tapes at me you ain't all that <laughs> yeah that's one of my favorite ll songs <laughs> me too <laughs> <laughs> because he's so self-deprecating in it and like all my friends left me my girls left he, me he couldn't even get a haircut <laughs> he couldn't get a haircut <laughs> they throwing his tapes he's at him riding the bus by hanging on the back of it but his <laughs> hand kept slipping <laughs> Like, I just had an, uh, an emotional response when I put this album on because, like, right. now I have, like, memories of listening to it as a kid. Whereas the other stuff is, like, it's familiar, but yeah. I don't have any connection to it. Also, I still can't get over us seeing a cereal commercial using Milky Cereal. <laughs> yeah. The person who chose that song. They had to have snuck it in. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, there's this get song this. by, you know, that guy from NCIS? He has a song <laughs> called Milky Cereal. It'd be perfect. I wonder if we can get away with this on <laughs> TV. <laughs> I can't remember which brand it was. I think it was Honey Nut Cheerios or something. But I just remember we were sitting there like, uh, excuse me, what? <laughs> and then Milky Cereal, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Honey Nut Cheerios. As there's like milk and cereal yeah. crashing into each other. <laughs> It was a bit much if you knew the <laughs> reference. Otherwise, it's like, oh, you're talking about cereal. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Yeah. So, obviously, I really love this album because, well, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The next album, 14 Shots to the Dome, I can't say that I'm a real fan of this one. 
because yeah. it kind of goes back and forth, like I was saying, to good to bad mm-hmm. or not as good. But the uh, pink cookies in a plastic bag. Crushed by buildings. Being crushed by buildings. <laughs> as crazy as that song is, I like it because of the beat. I was about to say, I think I just like it because of the sample. Yeah, the the album and the video have two different beats, okay. and I like both of them, but I'm in it for that. Yeah. Like, what does this mean? I don't know, but it's provocative. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I just assume it's something sexual, but I have no idea what pink cookies in a plastic bag after we're getting done crushed re- by buildings. After we're done recording, <laughs> I will tell you. Actually, okay. <laughs> I will tell you right now and then just edit this out. Okay. The plastic bag is a condom. Okay. The building is his dick. Uh-huh. And the pink cookies are the pussy. I just assumed it was sexual, but I couldn't I couldn't piece the bits together. <laughs> You that's have what to edit it is. That out. <laughs> Those are someone else might have the question. That's too. true. So we'll leave that in. Yeah, I feel like this album. So this one came out in 1993, and I'm noticing a trend of rappers who had came out in the late 80s, and we talk about this transition a lot. Where by like 92, 93, things kind of changed. Right. And I feel like rappers who came out in the late 80s, they kind of have to figure out that transition. Yeah. And this album sounds like him figuring that out. Yeah. Because the next album, Mr. Smith, is completely different. And this is more of his lane again. It's like, you know what? Let's stay away from the yep. boom bap stuff <laughs> and let me get back to talking to the ladies. So you got Hey Lover and right. doing it and lounging. and. But he still got the stuff for these quote unquote streets with yeah. the I Shot You. Yeah, he got I Shot You and the remix. So mm-hmm. like I said, he always had something for the street just to let y'all know I still got it. I'm just not running around here with baby oil on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> and I can still give you some bars too. I remember being really upset when I bought this album because you know what I'm going to say? I the do. Lounging single or what you heard in the video is not on the album. Is not on the album. <laughs> it's completely nope. different. It is. You know, I'm ready to sing Who Do You Love with Total yep. and all of a sudden I hear a night and day sample. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is this? <laughs> I don't mind that version though. I might have liked it if I had heard it first, but right. when I'm expecting something else and you hear that, it's a little bit different. I get it. <laughs> I understand. I have that beef, and we've mentioned it several times that you hear a song in a video, you go buy the song on yeah. the album, and it's different, and you want to flip your car over. Right. Because now you got to go and buy the single. Yes, exactly. A maxi single. <laughs> So you get all these extra remixes. I don't need six versions. I just want the video version <laughs> or the the version you played on the radio. Right. <laughs> don't trick me like this. And then I don't think they ever really made it clear. Now I'm trying to remember, like, when we watched the video, did it say lounging remix? Sometimes it did. Sometimes it didn't. You just had to <laughs> take a roll of the dice and hope you got the right one. Right. So the next album was Phenomenon, and it's a, a little bit controversial with 4321. Mm-hmm. It created a beef between him and Cannabis. Not Cannabis's fault, though. <laughs> it really wasn't. <laughs> it was just, to me, LL being a little bit sensitive. and <laughs> He, he felt just, slighted like Michael Jordan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he should have just left this one alone. I don't see how it was a diss. Right. Just by him saying, hey, that mic on your arm, let me use it. I don't think that's a diss. To me, that sounds more like he's looking up to him. Basically. Just kind of like, well, I would not have thought anything ill. The original verse, because it has Red Man, Method Man, and DMX Mm -hmm. on the song. So he mentions something to Method Man about where the God's at. Red Man, where this at. LL, that mic on your arm, let me borrow that. And then he goes into his verse. That's it. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) Mr. Smith took offense to it (laughs) and then told Cannabis to change his verse. Mm -hmm. And he was going to take his off at the end when he was dissing Cannabis, but he didn't, leading to them having this 30-year beef. So then he changed his verse. Yeah, he did. He did everything (laughs) that was asked of him. He was like, oh, you don't like it? Cool. I'll change it. Yeah. 
And then LL said he was going to change his from dissing him, mm-hmm. and he didn't. He didn't. He didn't, and then they took him out of the video, too. Mm-hmm. But they let him be on the remix version with Master P. <laughs> that bothers me. Master P is always ruining songs that he shouldn't be on. <laughs> and I like Master P, but he did not need to be on this song or Snoop's Lalo. That's just a rant that I had to get okay. out, and let's get back to LL. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I saw that in 2015, Mm -hmm. him and Cannabis performed the song at some concert that he was performing at. So he has squashed it. Okay. Did Cannabis say his let me borrow the mic line? No, he did the (laughs) the one that's on the remix. Okay. Because when he was starting to perform, I was like, oh, he actually going to let him perform it? No, he didn't. (laughs) And then, of course, LL, (laughs) this is hilarious. He did his verse with his arm around Cannabis. (laughs) Like, how are you going to be talking shit about this man with your <laughs> arm around his neck? But oh, man. That's LL for you. I was trying to think of some kind of LL acronym for being out of pocket. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> well, if you want to talk about LL being out of pocket, earlier this year, there was a tweet that came out. Mm-hmm. And somebody said that LL Cool J is ridiculous in every video that he's ever been in. Look it up. And <laughs> it's true. Every video he has been in looks ridiculous. <laughs> So on his TikTok earlier this year, he responded to all of the tweets with the clips from the videos of him doing something silly. And that's pretty funny. So you can check that out. We'll link to it on the website showing LL being ridiculous. Some examples. Do you have any? In the Headsprung video, he's playing a girl's thigh like a guitar. (laughs) Uh, In the Doing It video, he's eating an apple at a peep show. In an LSG video, he's playing football with some little kids and he's stiff arming them, knocking them, <laughs> knocking them all over the field. So just shit like that. Yeah. Just silly things. And he said it was his intention to be silly in all of his videos. And he was. Six minutes of pleasure. He's sitting in a baby crib and drinking from a baby bottle. <laughs> that might be the weirdest one. I don't think I've ever seen that video. It's hilarious. I'll look it up. All right, the next album is The Goat, Greatest of All Time. The irony of that is this is my least favorite LL Cool J album. I can't think of one song that I actually like on it. Um, My notes are completely blank. (laughs) That's fair (laughs) because I don't have a song listed either. (laughs) So the irony of him being the greatest of all time, which was a legitimate claim when he said it. Right. And this being the result, I was a little disappointed. Same. (laughs) That's all you got? (laughs) Yeah. Well, he bounced back with the next album called 10. So he had Love You Better, the one that you don't like, Paradise, because Paradise Paradise is very nice. (laughs) See, no, no. I am uh, in conflict with that song because I love A. Marie's part. I know. But that Paradise is very nice just throws me off every time. (laughs) Paradise is very nice. (laughs) What about All I Have? (laughs) You don't like that one either? I don't like how J. Lo's part is so sharp where she's like, All I Have. You know, like the notes go up so sharply. I'm like, why are you singing it like that? It makes me think of like, you know, when Drew Hill is jumping up and down in the tell me (laughs) That's how her voice sounds. That's how her voice sounds to me. (laughs) It's just jumping up and down like Drew Hill. (laughs) I don't have a problem with either of the songs. They don't bother me that much. I I think they're okay. Yeah. Love You Better is okay. But those are songs that I think you just like to hear in the club or something. Right. I wouldn't just sit at home and listen to it. Although, like I said, I do listen to Paradise sometimes just for Amory's part. Okay. (laughs) That's pretty much the last album I could say that I bought because that was around the time I just stopped buying albums. Mm -hmm. I started illegally downloading individual songs. And eventually legally downloading. And then legally (laughs) downloading with the streaming of today. Yeah, the next couple albums, The Definition, Todd Smith, Exit 13, Authentic. The only songs I can really give you from those are Hush and Headsprung. Where they call him Big Ellie. <laughs> I only know Headsprung. I kind of just skimmed the rest of the albums. Headsprung, if you were going to clubs when that song was out, I have never felt a song like that before. <laughs> My body was vibrating when it would come on. It it physically hurt. <laughs> I have never felt bass like that in any song in my life like i make fun of him talking about they call me big ellie but once the song starts playing it's like oh this is my shit but (laughs) i'm almost paralyzed because the bass is just (laughs) vibrating my entire soul that's just a club hit too i'm not gonna sit around and listen to heads (laughs) yeah i'm not gonna listen to it on my own (laughs) but But if it comes on at the club yeah if i got a drink in my hand and we're out somewhere it's Mm. like 
They call me Big Eddie. <laughs> I'll be rapping right along with it. All right, so we wrapped up all of his discography. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite album and what's your favorite song? So, surprise, surprise, favorite album, Mama Said Knock You Out, because that was my, like, real introduction into LL, and I like most of the songs. There's, like, two or three that I don't really listen to, but it's an almost no skip. Right. And my favorite song is Around the Way Girl. I could have predicted that. I should have <laughs> known. I don't know why I asked. I would say a close second would either be the Jingling Remix or Mama Said Knock You Out. For me, my favorite album is Mr. Smith because that's probably the most complete one where, like I said, you get a balance of the street stuff and the lady stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with that one. And the song, it's a tie. I'm either going with the breakthrough from Bigger and Deffer. Mm -hmm. Or Jack the Ripper, because he does all these songs for the ladies, but when he got to get out and battle somebody, <laughs> he does, and he does it well. So I'm going with those two. All right. All right. So we've talked about his music career. He's had a pretty solid career as an actor. He's mm -hmm. been doing it for 20 plus years now. What do you like in terms of his acting? Is there any performance that you like? Um, I actually realize I don't really watch much of the stuff he's been acting in, except for In the House was probably the only thing I watched regularly. Okay. I've caught him in an episode here or there in right. NCIS, <laughs> one of those background TV shows. <laughs> and then we watched Last Holiday semi-recently when we <laughs> yeah, were- <laughs> that was pretty entertaining. <laughs> that ended up being pretty entertaining. We were um, doing the Queen Latif episode. It was funny seeing the two of them, you know, they're usually like these very like cool and strong rappers yeah. in the movie. They're, they're both nerds. Yeah, they're both <laughs> nerds basically. So that was fun. So other than that, oh, yeah. And then we watched Crush Groove um, a couple years ago or something. Yeah. And it was just hilarious because he was forcing himself into every scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is so funny. Even places that he shouldn't be. He's sweeping. Yeah. He's delivering food. <laughs> and then he burst into Rick Rubin's room yeah. to try and perform for it. He almost gets shot by Jam Master J. Yeah. And I haven't watched any of his movies. I've been meaning to watch, was it In Too Deep? Or yeah, something with about him Deep. and Omar, Omar Epps. Epps. Yeah, like that's just a movie that I've just never watched. Right. And he's done a few more movies, but I haven't seen any of them. So I guess I'll say, I don't know if this counts, but I'm going to say it as my favorite performance because I don't watch a lot of his shows, is when he did that Gap commercial okay. and basically <laughs> turned it into an undercover boo-boo ad. Okay. <laughs> For us, by us on the low. I was going to bring that up a little <laughs> bit later as well. That's one of my favorites. I watched an interview with Damon John, so I have a little more background on that. Okay. <laughs> so I ended up just watching this interview with Damon John, one of the founders, and Gap wanted LL to help them redefine their preppy image. But according to Damon, LL said he felt like they were sort of just like, you know, hey, just come in doing your little rap things. Right. And it's clear that there was no one in the room that really understood because he's wearing a fubu hat. And also the line, Forest Bias on the Low. Damon said that Gap had spent $30 million on that ad and it took them five weeks to pull it because it took that long for someone to <laughs> that realize is hilarious. that it was basically a FUBU ad. <laughs> but at the same time, he said that they hired an agency after that and they found that the demographic that they were trying to reach it had increased by 300% because these kids thought that you could buy FUBU at the Gap. And so after that, he said that Gap hit him up and they worked it out and Gap decided to spend another $60 million to re-air that commercial. Okay. Even though they weren't planning to sell any FUBU at the Gap. <laughs> right. But they were okay with tricking the kids to come into the Gap shop, I <laughs> guess. Like, well, why are you here? Yeah. And then, I mean, it worked out for both Gap and FUBU because he said that FUBU sales also increased as Of course. Well, so. All right. I was not expecting that. I did not know. And now you know. Uh, my favorite performance for him as an actor is going to be Any Given Sunday, just because he played an asshole football player, and everybody in the movie were asshole football players, <laughs> including Jamie Foxx and Bill Bellamy and Lawrence Taylor. Mm -hmm. But to me, that was his best performance. Uh, I'm sure Jamie Foxx doesn't feel that way because they were fighting on the set and punching each other in the face, but they straightened it out. They're cool now. <laughs> They've done songs together. Okay. All right. So, our last topic, LL Cool J, greatest of all time. These are his words. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not making this up. He did. And I'm going to explain why he's the GOAT in 60 seconds or less. Talk that talk. I'm going to talk that talk. <laughs> Let me pull up my timer here. Okay. Right now. 60 seconds. 60 seconds on the clock. The reason that he is the GOAT. He would get into random beefs with people, but he never ran. Some of his best songs were in response to the beef, kind of like an animal backed into a corner. Whenever he would have beef or a lackluster album, boom, LL was back. <laughs> Even though he was a hip hop ladies man, he always had a street record to show that he still had. <laughs> Second reason, in Halloween H2O, he played a security guard and didn't die. <laughs> then again in Deep Blue Sea, he didn't die. He was the black man who didn't die in movies, breaking a long tradition of niggas getting killed in the first seven <laughs> minutes of a horror movie. Thirdly, he dropped a FUBU reference in the middle of a Gap commercial while wearing a FUBU cap. Then we went to the Gap looking for FUBU. <laughs> Most importantly, he originated the term GOAT. Based on that, he's it. Other rappers have been claiming titles from the beginning. If somebody else wanted to, they would have claimed. People had said it before, mm -hmm. he made the acronym, it's his. Boom, 60 seconds. <laughs> I have no arguments. Well, yeah, you can't. <laughs> you can't argue that fact. All right. Now that I've told you my reason for him being the greatest of all time, mm -hmm. do you have any thoughts on his career and his place in pop culture? Well, I think that if you could start when you're 16, back in the 80s, and even if now some people only know him as the bald guy on NCIS, <laughs> the fact that he's still like relevant, you can't really, can't really argue with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's an illustrious, illustrious career. And there's just so many hits. I was watching when he got inducted in the Hall of Fame and Dr. Dre did the speech. Right. And it was just hilarious because he kind of ribbed him a little bit for saying, I'm going back to Cali. I don't think so. And then he says, where do you live now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody makes it out to California. <laughs> Once you hit it big, that's yeah. where you make it. Yeah, but they did the little montage of his career, of course. And I'm sure that was hard to put together to pare it all down to like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of times, especially for artists that we loved a lot when we were young, as their careers get longer and we just kind of start to lose interest, I think sometimes you just forget <laughs> until you take the time to kind of go through everything. Go through everything. I've said this many times on the pod. Listening to entire catalogs is a completely different experience than listening to an album every couple of years. Right. Well, the way I look at it is his career basically laid the blueprint for other rappers to follow. He's the, I'm on the corner with the dudes, mm -hmm. but I'm sexy enough for the ladies so I can take my shirt off and perform with baby oil on my chest. And continually lick his lips. Licking his lips all the time. He's the reason that Tupac and 50 Cent and Nelly and Ja Rule <laughs> could pull this off convincingly. <laughs> That's a lot of shirtless rappers you just named. Exactly. And it, <laughs> it's all from him. He was one of the first rappers to get into acting. He made that transition. He's like hosting Grammys now. Right. He was honored at the Kennedy Center. Mm -hmm. Like you said, he's in, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's a legit legend, even if he does look ridiculous in his music videos. <laughs> You cannot take away what he's done. And that's why he is the greatest of all time. I mean, if you coin the term, I guess you kind of have to be, right? That's my point. Even if he's not the best rapper, he claimed that title. It's his. You can't take it away from him. I agree. All right. You got anything else you want to say about James Todd Smith? I don't think so. Me neither. <laughs> that's all I have for this episode. So we're going to wrap it up here. I'm just going to say, check us out on social media at Troy Podcast. Check out our website, TroyPodcast.com. Make sure to rate and follow on your podcast service of choice. Leave us a five-star review on Apple Podchaser or Good Pods. If you don't do that, I'm going to come to your house and go... <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm not gonna do that uh please don't but yeah just go uh, ahead and <laughs> that wasn't strange at all give us five stars and <laughs> leave a review if you can do you like to add anything else i have nothing to add i think it's time to go ahead and shut this one down i think so we'll see you guys again in two weeks bye